How many beans make gone? Phases of lunacy. Phase two. The good old days. A bygone age. Are we all predestined to live in a bygone age? Th these days, bygone has become synonymous with a time when somebody had to be actually there to know it really happened without needing confirmation on the media, in which case you were just living in a folk tale, which old folks told each other with no intermediations. Now, now, if you're lucky, you can point to yourself on a screen as definitive proof you were really there when it happened, even though you're not there anymore. Hard evidence, good as DNA, you were a part of history. Whose history? Your history, my history, not the history of a bygone time when people only had each other's word for it, in which case, by the time you've got beyond that point, it should be clear that somebody else is defining your history. If it's not really happening on the screen, you're just living in the lost horse and buggy byways of the bygone, a bit of a joke in the real world time for your medication, Mr. Wallensacker, who prescribes the medication also controls the technology that rules reality, at least people perception of it. You ain't so big. You're just so pharmaceutically tall. As soon as, as soon as radio and movies prepped us for television entering our living space, local culture became at best a second-rate imitation of the main event, which a whole industry of time, energy, ingenuity and money had invested in polishing up those definitive moments that could render your own puny acoustics but an amateurish wind blowing yesterday's litter to a derelict bygone tunnel. Nobody catching your drift anymore. No hard evidence of the culturally iconic at all seems to be the way of all progressive creativity. How do, you, how do you keep them down on the farm once they've been to the Oscars by virtual proxy? Or we are the world's band-aid via satellites, experienced a living corpse in all its lazily hologramic glory, or your Uncle Alan sounding like Pavarotti on auto-tune karaoke. Your, your community is now out of your hands. And you need to be happy just to have a day job so you can afford appropriate apps. Little people in the big screen, white screen world, do you, do you believe in magic? Buy two miracles and get one on free trial for a month. Just remember not to delete after the novelty's worn off. Fabricate, accumulate, manipulate data, one of the most addictive conditions in this big widescreen world is convenience. Being provided all the essentials of living and dying without you doing anything at all, really. And, and the more money or credit you have, the more convenient everything will be. Every comfort and aid that money and good credit can buy. No going ungently into that stormy good night, some raggedy assed wastrel John Doe, nobody raging away in some garbage strewn gutter against the dying of your inconsequential light. You're somebody, oh somebody, please mop my brow and tell me they'll miss me. Sorry, your app's been deleted, hey? Good riddance to uncredited rubbish. Who was? Who was that masked hologram just stole my purse? Don't give a damn, really, just want me purse back. Some people just don't have a bone in their body. Must have got melted in the pots. I just, I just invented jello. Changed my life. It'll change the world. I could make a fortune out of this. It's sweet. It's convenient and go down with a plop. So don't nobody tell me my life was wasted. If nobody with any brains would eat this artificial crap, hey, I've already found my target audience. If at some point we could just convince everybody to stick their head in a microwave oven for two minutes, three times a day, we could save a lot of research funding on behavioural psychology, social engineering and appropriate medications for a good death. Is any is anybody following me on Bakelite? Hey, I popped it in the oven first. There's a, there's a reason they call it junk food. And tell people at the same time they are what they eat. Obsolescence in process. Let's face it, most people don't know they're alive till they get sick. We'll blame it on their natural biology, just not being up to snuff, just not functioning well enough. Plus eating all that junk food, of course, but we did warn you, it's on the label. People will believe anything if they don't need to read it in the small print, only on the big widescreen headlines, especially if it seems to contradict itself, makes 
The world seems so much more sophisticated. Why why would the world lie to me? If, if everybody's doing it, picking their nose and chewing, it tastes like deep-fried oranges, those over-sweetened moments of dysfunctionality will undoubtedly be processed in the funeral procession. A eulogy from the great Grand Master of the Stern Bear Lodge himself, a 12-gun military salute and a documentary on Netflix. Shame you won't really be there anymore, but you are now confirmedly a man or woman who helped make history what it is today. Fake news and true crime. Addiction is real may not be natural, but it's real. When is natural not real? When it's really artificial? What do you get when you cross a scientist with a pop-tart? Progress. Something that's not, not real, definitely not natural, but you can artificially rediscover the same truth in every bite. And you will come to learn to live with it, become addicted to it. You will learn to love your pop-tarts and have faith in its manufacturers to heal everything they're fucking up at the same time. You bought into it. Now you have to deal with inflation. Sometimes words escape me. So I'm no longer accountable for anything I don't say because words have escaped me. Is any, anybody following me on Twitter? Do I care? Don't you care? Hey, I tweeted first. And all these years we thought we were progressing to freedom when really all these thousands of years we've been processing a more sophisticated slavery. No need for whips or cattle prods when you got popped out some. And we will be ruled by ourselves. We'll become our very own fascist organisation. You know, slavery was never racially motivated. Simply streamlined along skin colour or even conspicuous physiognomy lines for clearer definition who's a slave and who's not. Don't need to invest in OID tags one look and you'll know who can be sold to the highest bidder. The ones not wielding a whip or a cattle prod and seem to be wearing a clean shirt. Africans had slaves. The English had slaves, sold them to the Americans who sold them to each other. The Spaniards, the Russians, the French didn't have to be black, white, red, yellow, purple so long as they served their purpose and got the job done. Anyone who intended to do a lot of building, mining, harvesting, empire building, anything potentially back-breaking that they themselves wouldn't choose to do, yet maximally profit by it, bottom line, free labour. Till in time, you've manifested your mastery to the point you can change your terminology without forfeiting your right to tell people what they have to do or else. Eventually, you can make them pay for their own upkeep, so long as they keep subsidising your own ambitions. Did, did you know George Washington? He put a reward out for the return of his runaway slaves. At least two of them were white. The good old days. There's, there's a rumour going round that black people never do anything bad unless white people made them do it. Same with red people, yellow people, brown people, and even some suntanned white people. A lot of white people only do bad things because black people sold them some drugs, sold to them wholesale by white people. Red people don't do drugs, they only do liquor, sold to them discount by white people to get them drunk. Yellow people prefer tea and advanced math. Jewish people don't do anything bad because they're not white people. And you could get prosecuted for saying otherwise, haven't they suffered enough? Unlike black people, because white people haven't finished with them yet. They finished with the red people years ago. And I'm not, I'm not just talking about the Irish. The natives are not restless anymore. They've given up their ghost dance. The Irish have just given up their country to Google and the white people who Googled them. White people don't suffer anymore. Or if they do, they deserve it for making black people do bad things. Nobody... Nobody makes white people do bad things. It's, it's just in their nature. Ask the red people or the brown people or the untanned white people who at least are not suffering from sunburn. Let's face it, humanity could be losing the human race to too many colours bleeding together. It means you're either not doing your laundry right or everybody's been arrested for not paying their taxes, which are colourless, odourless, tasteless and rumoured to be compulsory. Depends who's spreading the rumours. Reparations will be made, 
on a case-by-case -case basis. To anybody who can prove beyond a shadow of doubt, they are definitely the ones who've been most fucked over, and they know exactly who is responsible, especially if it's the white people. Though the yellow people can never be fully exonerated. There's too much fucking mystery going on in the Orient. So maybe, maybe the red people are off the hook already on the reservation, the House of Tonics, not the Irish, who may still have something to answer for, if only for being white and freckled at the same time. As for the red people, politically speaking, they're not blue. Colour coordinations can get more and more complex. Would you like your coffee white or black? Your decision could put you out of a job. With tinted sprinkling, you'd really be muddying the hot waters, inciting tsunamis of tide-eyed rainbow people to leap out of the lunar sunspot, demanding justice for anybody who feels deserviced. And I've suffered too long under the yoke of gourmet egg whites, red herrings, yellow fevers and black puddings. It's time to do some advanced math here and chai tea up for a whole one two-tiered basket case. So sleeves up anybody who thinks the truth is far too complicated to survive any debate but by eliminating it altogether. Are you now? Are you now or have you ever been genetically modified? If you have, you may act freely till told otherwise. If you, if you haven't, you must not speak now and stay forever in one place. Well, well that's sorted out. Now. now we can get back to normal. Anybody genderless, colorless, tasteless and odorless here who feels offended or discriminated against, as for the vulnerable, ain't eh? nothing we can do about that. Just know you did not die in vain. You helped make this world a better place, free of rumors and myths you just can't rely on. Slavery is in the eye of the Beholder, so is genocide. Deny it's not still going on. May as well admit it was a one off occasion perpetrated by someone whose name escapes me. I, I just know it was me, Uncle Alan. Is anybody is anybody following me on the good ship Lollipop? Do I care? Don't you care? Hey, just give me a pig foot in a Shirley Temple and, and send me back over there. <laughs>